Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate effect size and we're going to do this by hand for a two-sample t-test. So before we start, let's take a look at the results of a t-test which I have already carried out. Um, this formula, this uh, calculation for effect size works the same way for paired and unpaired tests or dependent or independent tests. So in this instance here, I've conducted a paired or dependent samples t-test, where I'm comparing the results of a pretest uh, versus the results of a post-test after a training intervention. So in other words, I've given some students a test before a class, um, then held the class and then gave them a test after the class. And I wanted to see if the student scores on average were different uh, after the training intervention. So I was looking to see, is there an effect if the training intervention has had an effect? My null hypothesis was that the sample that, that I'm using samples, but it's the population pretest score is equal to the population post test score. And the um, alternative hypothesis is the population mean uh, pretest score is not equal to the population post test score. So in other words, I'm looking for a difference and not specifying any direction here. And I've conducted this test at an alpha value of 0 0.05. I've already calculated this, the uh, sample means here, uh, 28.5 for the pretest and 36.7 for the post-test. So that's a strong indicator that we have an effect here. And the um, in this case here, the variance for the pretest score was 27. Uh, it was just 21.5 for the post-test. We're going to need those values now in a few moments. When I've conducted the results, I um, uh, conducted a t-test. The test statistic was minus 4.63. Uh, from t-tables, I found that the critical value was minus 2.16. When I plot that onto the t-distribution over here, we can see the, because we have a minus number, we're in the left tail, our critical value is minus 2.16. Our test statistic is minus 4.65. It falls into our reject region. Therefore, we have evidence to reject the null hypothesis, because in this case here, our t-stat is less than our t-crit in the, in the left tail. So our decision was to reject the null hypothesis, we have found an effect. So we can conclude that the training intervention or the class in this case here has had an effect on the student's te mean, mean test score. What we don't know then is what the size of this effect is. All this tells us is that we have found an effect, that we have found a significant difference. So this is where effect size comes in. And the concept of effect size tells us, it adds a dimension to that uh, size of the difference between the two, uh, in this case, test scores. The formula is a um, little bit complicated at first, but let's take a look at it. Uh, ES is for effect size. Uh, on the top of the formula, we subtract one um, um, sample mean from the other. So that's X bar 1 minus X bar 2. So that's going to be 28.5 minus 36.7 in this case here. Then we divide that by the square root and we're going to use the two variances here. So sigma squared is the very one is the variance for group one, which is 27. And sigma squared two is the variance for um, group two, which is 21.5. We add those together and divide by two. Note that the sigma symbol here indicates the population um, variance. We don't know what the population variance is, so we substitute the sample sam um, sample variance as it gives us a good unbiased um, opinion uh, or an estimate of what the um, um, population variance is going to be. Uh, that also means, by the way, that this is going to be an estimated effect size. So just be aware of that because we're using sample uh, variances instead of population variances, which are unknown. Uh, this gives us an estimate of the effect size, but it's a good estimate nonetheless. So let's um, start plugging in those values here. So um, I'm going to push in uh, effect size is equal to the two sample means divide minus each other. So that's 28.5 minus 36.7 divided by the square root of variance for group one, which is 27. I'll put in 27.0 just to keep the decimal places here, plus the variance for group two, 21.5, and that gets divided by two. So that gives us the pooled variance in here. And uh, then we just using the uh, square root sign then to convert um, the pooled variance into standard deviation. Standard deviation is the square root of the pool of the variance. So um, then what we do then is to finish that out, um, we will um, just work this out one by one. So uh, 28.5 minus 36.7 is equal to, um, that's going to be minus 8.2 divided by the square root of the two variances to get each other. So let me uh, perform that there. So 27, point, 27 plus 
equals and then divide that by 2 and that's equal to 24.25 and while I have that on my calculator I'm going to hit the square root button and that gives me a value of 4.92 and when I work that out finally then just let me use a different color here so I want to get um, 8.2 and change that to a minus divided by 4.92 9, 2 equals minus 1.6 uh, recurring. So I'll do that to two decimal places, minus 1.67. So this is, the, um, this is the size of the effect that we found over here. Now, how do we interpret this number? Well, Cohen, the um, effect size was invented by um, a statistician called Jacob Cohen, and he came up with a rule of thumb for values for effect size. If we had a, 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 a value here, and he used the, the measure of Cohen's D as a measure of effect size, if the uh, value was point, 0 0.2, we had a small effect. In other words, you would have found a difference, but it would not be a very meaningful or significant difference. Um, effect sizes of 0.5 are usually regarded as a medium effect and effect sizes of 0.8 or more uh, is regarded as a large effect. In other words, you have found an effect, you have found a difference and it is a very big difference. It's a meaningful difference. So in our case here, we can see uh, the effect size is minus 1.67. Ignore the, um, uh, the, the minus sign here. We just use the absolute value and we can see that we have a very, very big effect here. So after rejecting the null hypothesis because of our test statistic, it being less than our critical value here in the left tail. Our p-value would also be less than our alpha value of 0 0.05 in this instance. Uh, we have found that there's an effect, and then in this case here, we can say that it is a very, very big effect. So just to finish up, when you are writing up a statistics test and you report your results, uh, do do a quick calculation for effect size. It's really easy to do. You would usually have all the components of this already and uh, that gives the uh, researcher then or anybody reading your results an indication of how meaningful any difference that you found is. So that's how you calculate effect size for a two sample t-test. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.